Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Planescape Torment. I am your host, Melee Wizard, and we're here in Ravel's Maze! I fear I probably shouldn't be here at this point, but... Here... Here I am. Uh... Okay, so I've... Done. Just want to full clear the map here. Damn. There we go. And uh, clear out whatever enemies are still here. I don't remember exactly where I died, but oh well. Hello, Revel. We've spoken before, but we're actually meeting in person now. The plump, hook-nosed crone before you doesn't look like, doesn't look much like a myth. She is outfitted in a simple, if dirty, brown shirt and leggings, with a number of pouches hanging from her frayed belt. She seems oblivious to your presence, more concerned with the tangled black roots woven together to form the floor of the maze than anything transpiring around her. Uh, stay for a moment. A tangle of jagged gray hair juts from beneath the crone's hood, spreading down her shoulders like a mass of twisted gray roots. Sickly blue-gray flesh hangs in loose folds from her face. Her narrow chin, long and sharp, juts forward in an extreme underbite, and two filthy yellow canines protrude from her lower jaw like small tusks. Somehow I think that would be a very bad idea. The crone's voice is thick and scratchy, as if trying to force its way past layers of dust. Her eyes are a dull, bloody red, with black veins running through them like tree branches. As she gazes at you, a strange, crawling sensation passes through you, like snakes burrowing beneath your skin. Well, hello now, my pretty thing. Have you returned at last? You were gone so long. I afraid you forgot poor lonely Ravo. That's a lot of experience right there. Uh I ha I did forget for a time. No, I have returned. Have you? But what has returned? She squints at you with her black veined eyes and hisses softly. Let Ravel see how you are fared in this life. She reaches out as if to caress you, and you suddenly notice her fingers are talons, each fingernail filthy and wickedly sharp. Her ragged talons trace their way across your skin, and in their wake you feel the, stra the same strange tingling sensation you felt when Ravel first looked at you. Her eyes dim somewhat, and her talons glide gently along the contours of your face, lingering on your scars. Revel's finger withdraws, and she looks at you sadly. Oh, sad, sad, broken half-thing. All the pieces. She squints at you again. No longer the one, Ravel, who are you? Are you still a broken after all this sad, sad time? A, bo a body you possess, but a body of knowledge you do not? She points her ragged talon at your chest, at your scars. Many and such, such scars you have, all are scrawled on your skin. Many tales does your skin tell. 
Your scars and tattoos shout to me. Here is a man in confrontation with the world. Ravel makes a crooning noise, not unlike a dying bird. Yes, such tales as would shrivel even a hag's ears. The tales are many. They echo of balance imbalanced, trials of war, battles with fiendish elements, and a creature that feeds on others from afar to sustain itself. And of torments. Such torments flesh has never known. Uh... Balance imbalanced? Divided in two you were, with, when your mortality was peeled from you. No longer balanced, much a broken in the separation. Both a blessing and a mistake. But more mistake than blessing, Ravel thinks. Forgotten the how of it. I have... have I? Ravel's gaze dims for a moment, the black veins swimming in her eyes. And even if I remembered it, I would never do it twice. Not forgotten the moment, have I, after the break, a seeing the pain scream from your veins, your cries like a wailing child, every bit of your being filled with emptiness. Terrible, even for these eyes. So that's why I feel hollow inside, because my mortality is gone? Very well. What are these other tales my skin tells? Yep. Uh, Trials of War. Great, great trials of war. Much too much to be borne by any, any mortal thing. This war touches all, my precious half-man. There is no place where its caress is not felt. Did it touch you? To this, Revel says I. Uh, battles with fiendish elements. Two fiends but heads. Revel sniffs as if in contempt. Their tiny heads filled with ideas of how the planes should be, yet can never be, or the planes they would be no longer. Such foolishness. And a creature that feeds on others from afar. No base hungers do you feel, but far, far more terrible ones boil beneath your skin, and such a cost. I know not... not? Not the nature nor the cause of these hungers, but heed this. Coming events cast their shadows before them, my precious half-man. There is no a saying of what these events will be, not even with Ravel's eyes. And these torments. What are these torments you speak of? Updated my journal. A lodestone pulls iron to it, and so do you, my precious half-man. Half but it is not iron, but tormented souls. As others suffer, they are drawn to you, and your path becomes theirs. Do you not see them in the eyes of those that have traveled here with you? The, the crackling, cackling sorcerer. Ravel's eyes seem to catch Ignis's fire and blaze with his hellish light. An ember of Ravel's once passion he carries, for he cares not what he does, but mayhap. Down inside, in the lightless places, he is tormented by what he once was afore the passions came upon him. Do my words burn true, O smoldering corpse? Burn. Fair enough. Uh, the Chattering Skull. Ravel doesn't bother to even look at Mort as if he is beneath her notice. Are the quips enough of a shield for what lies buried inside your brain box, hmm? Why speak truths when lies suffice? The Abyssal Temptress. Ravel sneers, her yellowed fangs piercing her purpled lips as she squints at Fall from Grace. A skin so fair, lips so rich, eyes that might cause you to forget Ravel herself, and yet she suffers more than any other. When one turns on their nature, many are the torments that arise from such a betrayal. Ravel, Grace replies softly, almost cautiously. I have come to terms with my... You lie, succubus! Ravel's lips peel back in a snarl. You lie! Do not dare lie to me when your heart is a book to me. Every word you spit screams of your torment. Ah. Ravel gestures to Anna as if she is for sale upon an auction block. 
Look upon the feisty tiffling, such fiery hair and voice. Ravel smiles, baring her rows of yellowed teeth. Shall I speak of your torment, Tiffling? Anna seems paralyzed, her eyes wide as Ravel turns her black veined gaze to her, gaze to her. You can see her trembling, her heart beating fast. No. No, I shall, I shall not speak of it. Ravel's voice drops, almost in exhaustion, and the smile fades from her face. Grown tired of cruelties and torments, Ravel has. The world is a jagged enough place. She turns to you, her bloody eyes dimmed, and she sighs. And my precious, precious half-man, for you, the greatest torment of all, life forevermore. Can it be life a cares for you as Ravel does? She gnashes her yellow tusks with a horrid clacking noise. One so brave, so passionate, so terribly lost. Sad, sad. Ravel, why did you make me immortal? A puzzle of bone and skin were you always, intriguing, and the most beloved of all who came to me, petitioning, requesting, pleading. Pleasing? Pleading for help. Ravel stares hard at you, her black-veined ember eyes narrowing. So hard to see you past the scars, to dig up the man who once was underneath. A shadow with substance, a seeking that which casts the light. I know you more, and no, no. Ravel pauses, her eyes dimming. No more than I know the nature of any man. Crossed paths have we, a man tainted with undeath, still feeling the pangs of separation, and an old withered crone, now all imprisoned. Seems, uh, seems it that we are meeting for the first time? No, no, not, not, not. Ravel seems confused for a moment, then shudders as if throwing off a weight. Not at all. An echo of a future meeting this is, or a past meeting, depending on which way time is facing. The now and then very similar. So tangled the now and then is, both mirrored in each other. Once and again you come before me with a problem to challenge me for a solution to an impossibility. Ravel hisses at you and her eyes blaze. Beautiful, ungrateful, beloved man. Ravel doesn't seem to have heard you. She still seems to be in the past, for her eyes dim as if looking far away. Such fire in your eyes, enough to stir a gray lady's heart. Passion to be free, but when freed, the fire in your eyes guttered out. With the separation, your life has shed all meaning, I fear. Ravel smiles with her yellowed fangs, then clicks them together as if laughing. Mayhap you should sit on your hind legs and limp your forepaws. Mayhap Ravel will give you another scrap of knowing. Ah, a gentled heart now. Ravel's black-veined eyes glint, and the corner of her mouth twists upwards like a snake. Has life softened you? Ah, but one can hope. Oh, more questions do you have? Ravel croons softly, but there is an edge to it as if she is reprimanding you. Tch, tch, but you have already asked so many. Ravel's black-veined eyes take on a curious gleam. The time for my questions is now, half-man. Uh, all right. Know this, and know Ravel's law. If you do not answer my questions, no more of your questions will I answer, my precious man. Step lightly with the answers, or the asking shall tear you. Or the asking shall tear you apart. I would know why you traveled here with these others. Know not the place they were traveling to. Cho chose? Ah, dangerous word, is it so? I didn't strong arm them. Well, I mean, I guess Anna was told to join me by somebody else, but, you know, she's still here. You think the Burning Man cares for any, cares any for choice? To burn or not to burn, those are his only choices, and in the end, only one choice always wins. For does fire have any desire but to burn? <sighs> Thank you, Ignis. 
Skull, skull, skull. Ravel clicks her tongue after each word and her smile widens. Your expression is difficult to read without the skin wrapping, but I feel your fear from here. Coming here was not your choice. Well, I didn't have anything better to do except go to one of the ladies' mazes and meet one of the evilest creatures ever to set foot in Sigil, so I said, sure, why not? Be, be quiet. Mort clacks his teeth. Like the hells I will. You think we're... We've listened to this crone rattler bone box enough, and now she's got some pair of stones saying I haven't got any skin. So what if I don't? Obviously, the fact she has skin has done wonders for her looks. Does she think I like being naked all the time? And another thing. The succubus. Ravel squints. Did she have a choice? May happen her smooth-skinned mind of soft silks and hard truths. Maybe choice. But no. A sensate must experience all, and to refuse to come, not to sensate would you be. Still no choice. The Tiffling, the fiery one. She Ravel cackles softly, and her eyes kindle as if amused. No choice at all. When you feel instead of think, there is little room for choice. Anna makes no response. Ravel's mere presence seems to have silenced her. Her tail has stopped flicking, however, and her eyes have lost their hard edge. There will be time enough for you to speak, my precious man. Ravel taps a talon against one of her yellow tusks. This question next. What do you feel for these that have come with you? Do they matter in your heart? Or are they tools for your will? What of the skull? Ravel doesn't even bother to look at Mort. Surely he matters not to one such as you. Or does he? Yeah. Curious, curious, or curious, her. Ravel smiles. Quite the puzzle box you are shaping up to be. What else lurks in the dark places of your mind? Ah. Ravel's voice takes on a threatening weight, and she turns to fall from grace, her red eyes blazing. And here's the core of it, the abyssal temptress. Does she rise above the merely carnal to you, or is she something else in your eye, hmm? Grace says nothing. She seems to be studying Ravel intently. You are suddenly struck with the feeling Grace is sizing up Ravel for weaknesses. Ravel turns back to you, clacking her yellowed tusks as if in anticipation. Speak, precious man, but have a care where your words fall. Ravel turns, clasps her tu clacks her tusks, then glances at Anna with a sneer. And what of this slip of flesh? The fiendling, the tiffling with the scarlet hair and the fiery passion. What is she to you, my precious man? My next question is this. Ravel's voice drops, almost whispering, and suddenly you have a strange feeling she does not want to hear the answer. What did you wait? Why did you wait so long to return to me? Ravel grew lonely without you, precious man. Is the way so hard? Well, I, it was a process, for sure. A hint of a smile plays on the corners of her mouth. Then your visit is precious, and I give thanks. Ah, yes. The third and last of my questions is a simple one. 
Answer it. Then your questions to me may fly free, and Ravel shall cage them with answers. My final question to you is this. What can change the nature of a man? What can change the nature of a man? What can change the nature of a man? Oh, jeez. Uh... Uh, I'm gonna go with age here, because you, as you grow older, you learn more experiences, and in its own way, you change along with it. And that is your answer? The veins in Ravel's eyes begin to shift slightly as she gives an evil smile. Be certain before you say. And that is all I wished for, my precious man. A simple answer, and in the end, many are the men I have laid low while they sought my answer. Countless times has the question been asked, and not once did the pathetic shells who came afore me answer with their answer, but always sought to creep inside my mind and find what I thought. Tch. There is no truth in that. Ravel falls suddenly, strangely silent. She is watching you warily. You never cared about any answer other than mine. Ever. Did you? Yet still you asked the question, knowing that no matter what the answer they gave, they would die by your hand. Updated my journal. Ravel hisses. Of course your answer was the only one I sought, for you were the only reason I asked the question. Did you think I cared for them? Did you think I have even cared a fraction of the amount for them that I cared for you, my precious man? Answer me that. I'm through answering your questions, Ravel. Now you'll answer mine. Of course. Ever questions, ever questions. Why did you make me immortal? It's what you wanted, Seedling, and you ask so sweetly. Now how could Ravel say no to one such as you? Immortality was your solution, and your challenge to me. I don't know, Seedling. Time has chipped away at my memories as well. It would seem... seem? If you remember, tell me. I'm a curious myself. It must have been something important. Isn't it in the nature of a man to want to live forever? Death was a thing you needed to dodge. An easy thing to say, mayhap, but to do it is not. Immortality, even with its flaws, was the best solution this withered mind could untangle. It led us not easily a change to goals, but it is possible. Thought be unwise. Th thought the unwise. Unwise? Revel. If water can be drawn from blood, mortality can be taken from a mortal, peeled back like a sticky film. The gulf between man and unman is great. You traveled the distance. I provided the means, but you crossed on your own. Ravel slaps her head and rakes her hand through her hair. Bad Ravel! Mortals are too flawed to be made to last. Still they break. They must be dragged kicking and screaming into an unhealthy new mold. The individual is flawed? Shortcuts must be made, and they can break the molded, for it is not always the mold that breaks, but the substance poured within it. Force something into a shape it was not meant to be, and it breaks. I thought the material was of stronger stuff, but you have been broken. Uh, technically, you have survived long, Immortals One, but you have become the prey of the creature that is life. She cups her hands, then reverses it, forming a canopy with her hands. The body is but a hut for the soul, but now no one dwells in your hut. Puzzle-fleshed, broken, beautiful, beautiful mortal man, the ritual was not 
not not not the finished thing Ravel's brows wrinkle and her talons pick at her hair tugging on a lone strand the ritual gave you what you wanted but the ritual gave what you wanted but great were the costs the casting of shadows the quiet violent deaths of the mind and the pain taking emptiness these things a dangerous are in such a fragile vessel no matter how strong a mortal man regret them and the ritual do I Of shadows? Ungrateful shades, but ungrateful without cause. The shades, they hate you, nameless one, for they are fathered by you, your children, once forsaken. They will never forgive. They will do everything they can to destroy the parent, such is the way of children. Um. I had seen one of those before. And now there are more of them. That's the question still is what is up with them? <laughs> mm -hmm. You cast shadows on existence, nameless one. With every death a shadow arises flesh from the fresh from the fields of your flesh. They wander for a time, but always they return looking to murder their parent. Such is the way of many offspring. Makes me wonder if I should be surprised I had only found one of those so far. Ravel purses her lips in disapproval, then suddenly pokes you in the chest with a talon. And thankless young men such as yourself. The ritual gave you what you... Uh, it's the quiet, violent death of the mind? A thousand deaths said you recover from each. Not so the mind. The mind is much more fragile. Its scars run deep and do not heal. The brain is encased in a hard bone shell, difficult to breach, but with no defense against that which eats, it, eats at it from within. Pain tanking emptiness. You have a hole where... where? Where your mortality once lay within your shell. She makes her hand into a fist and shakes it. Rattle, rattle, goes off the hollow man, a baby's plaything with naught but a tiny stone that clatters and clacks in your frame. Updated my journal. Do you doubt, Ravel? Of course, it delivered on what was promised. Not long after the spell drew to a close, I killed you to see if it had worked. You struggled so, but I kept my grit tight and watched you die your first of many deaths. Ravel clicks her cla uh, clacks her teeth. Then was I learned in its flaws. Ego enwraps us like a prison. Forgot I did that it oftentimes serves as a shield. Ravel clicks her tongue. My pretty, pretty thing, there is much wisdom in and understanding in the truth that life is a preparation for the ultimate goal, death. Our life is a means by which we learn how to die. If we forget such things... Yes, unfortunate. Without the mortality to hold such memories tight, the shell of a body is... So he took my mortality from me. Is it still intact? Ravel seems surprised, then alarmed. Yes, yes, yes! Fear not for a broken mortality. If you are here... Here? Here are talking to me. Intact your mortality must be. Such a thing cannot... Not... Not be destroyed as long as you exist. You are an anchor of your mortal soul. As long as you are intact, so shall it be. Made to last, are you? Ravel smiles and gives you a wheezing laugh. For life swallowed you and spit you out. It, <laughs> it swallowed him, but I don't know if he came out of that end. Uh -huh. Ravel, you took my mortality from you, and it has caused more harm than good. I would take it back now. You have had it over long, I think. Ah, you make a demand. Ravel's black-veined eyes sharpen and twist, taking a disturbing awareness, and she bears her yellow fangs. No, no, no. That, Ravel, I will not do. What is undone cannot be done. I 
I am not threatening Ravel, because I fear that will end badly for me. Ravel cannot give such a thing to you, my precious man, for Ravel has nothing to give. I have never possessed you or your mortality, though I wish to keep them both in my garden as selfish affections keepsakes trace the patterns of your flesh. But such things Ravel could not bring herself to do. Okay. Ravel gives a low, wide smile. Is that so hard for you to believe, fiendling? She cackles softly to herself. Does Ravel, being Ravel, and thus a myth, not deserve to carry such a feeling in her black, brambled heart? No creature is undeserving of such a thing, Ravel. The histories do not paint such a compassionate picture of you, however. <laughs> the past is past, and histories care little for us speaking the truth of it. Ravel frowns, and her, then her voice drops slightly, threateningly, as she studies Grace. The feeling brushed me, yes, and now hold your silver tongue, abyssal daughter. I need not your soft words to cloud the air here. The man and I shall speak, and you shall bow out of this. I shall attend to you shortly. I don't know, sweet thing, but if I were you, I'd get it back quick, quick. No telling what horrible things someone could do to you if they held your mortality for ransom. Ravel click, uh, clicks her talons together. It would like be holding someone's sweet, succulent soul. A puppet dancing on someone's strings would you be, and a most sad puppet too. Too? Know where it is, I do not. Yep. Ah, uh, not so quick to rush off you should be. Ravel gives a horrid smile, her tusks gleaming. I do not know where your mortality lies, my precious man, but there is another may carry the knowing of such a thing. And who might that be? Ravel's eyes dim, as if she is staring at something in the distance, and her voice slows. A fair-skinned one, you must you ask. An angel, a deva, one who soars on the wings of morning, and with his hands is the architect of horizons. He lies, lies beyond my keeping, in another cage, in another prison. In his knowing is the knowing of what you wish to know. Ask him your questions, listen to his answers, use them as guides. Updated my journal. Holy cow! In a leaving this prison, to another cursed prison will you arrive, though it may not appear as such to casual glances. Step alightly and find the golden link in the ever-shortening chain. The light shall give the dark of the matter, and new paths shall open to you. All the, of the past I am not held to particulars. You are fortunate to receive anything, O Caustic One. Ravel smiles, holding up one of her talons, and that is why you must keep each link safe. For if they are not smooth now, imagine what the chain will be like when more links shatter. Time and death are not as patient with others as they are with you. What if one of your precious links was to die? And what if you forgot yourself again? What would you do then? Where would you where would your stolen mortality be then? You would be lost forever. For there would be no one left to ask how to reach it. Tracing your path would become harder. Mayhap impossible. Uh... I can't even go back, go into the menu right now. Uh... If I had done anything regarding mage, I might go that route, but, well, maybe. Uh, nah. Hold. Ravel's voice drops to a low hiss, that of a serp like that of a serpent. The most important question you have yet to ask, my precious man. 
Has it occurred to you yet? Uh, no. Raphael, do you know how to leave this beautiful garden of yours, must you ask? Ask this, will you? Go on, go on. I know the branchings of this place, the twistings and bendings and burrowings. Though there are no leaves here, one may take their leave when they wish it. <laughs> wrap your hands around wrap your hands around you like branches. Make them encircle your chest like a cage. Step from the cage of the maze into the darkness, and into another cage your body shall go. A simple leaving, but there is no return when that final step is taken. So take heed and take what you need before you take the step. Which a question posed to the witch. Which? One of the edges knows, not I. The remembering of which has failed me, and the edges of the maze have had little to say on the matter. Why stay when one can leave, is your question to me? Ravel breaks into a crooked smile, displaying a row of fangs. I turn the question upon its head and send it a scurrying back to you. The answer lies not in the staying or leaving, but in the causes and reasons, my precious half-man. It is a want, a once want, but not a now want, and more and more a not, not, not at want. What do I need that lies beyond my brambled walls? It is a cruel, jagged world beyond the edges of this maze, and Ravel has pulled enough of its shards from her skin. Ah, so you say. R Ravel's voice takes on a strange whisper, very sad, that sends echoes through your mind. One final question do I have for you. Do you wish to leave me, my precious half-man? There is a terrible shimmering in the air around Ravel, and the sound of snapping twigs and cracking tree limbs, and the horrid sound of the trees bending and splintering. Ravel's lips peel back and her voice becomes shrill like a howling wind. What do you know of knowing, half-man? Know this. Know you will stay here until the end days in my brambled garden, never to leave, and you shall love me and as you are meant, as you promised. I shall not let you leave. I have the power to keep you here, and I shall use it. My black barbnaze shall not allow you to travel beyond it while I live, my precious, precious man. Return? Return as you claimed you would so long ago? No, no, you shall not lie to Ravel twice. No more centuries while I wait for you. Ravel's lips peeled ba peel back and her talons seem to grow, grow into fiendish claws. Here in my garden you will stay, and I'll wander the plains you will no longer. You have forgotten your place, half-man. Humility is in order. Updated I my feel journal. stronger. Attend me, my friend. I am hurt. Well then!
This is something. Uh Well then. So I guess join me next time when I see if I can actually leave this place. Yeah. So I guess until then this is Melee Wizard. And have a nice day.